Hello everyone. Welcome to the second edition of my YouTube channel. Tandaan nyo yan. Importante yan. So this afternoon, we are going to continue our discussion on the law and partnership. So let me share my screen with you. All right. Okay, for the second part, we will be discussing the following topic, classifications of partnership. Now, what are the kinds or classes of partnership? We will also discuss the kinds of partners and also the rule on payment made to the partnership and the managing partner. Now, this is a, a situation wherein um, a debtor will have to pay the partnership and that the payment is to be received by the managing partner. So there are certain rules that we have to apply no, for this one. And then uh, what about the stipulations exempting a particular partner in the profits and losses? And also, lastly, we will discuss on the rules on termination of the managing partner. Okay. Let us go to the first topic, classifications of partnership. This is actually a very just self-explanatory topic. You can just go over the same, no? Uh, as to subject matter or object, no? A partnership can be universal or particular partnership. Now, there are two kinds of universal partnership. The first one is universal partnership of all present property. No, which is uh, which will encompass any and all property that is owned by the partner at the time that he joined the partnership. The second type of universal partnership is universal partnership of profits. No, uh, the distinction between the universal partnership of all present property and universal partnership of profits is that. In the second one, there is less obligation or less burden on the partners because what will be contributed to the partnership will only be the profits or fruits of the properties of the partners. Now, there is also a particular partnership, no? Where in, uh, basically, in a particular partnership, um, the money property to be contributed by the partner will have to be identified and it will not encompass all present property of the partner as to liability a partnership can be considered as general or limited okay as to duration a partnership can be partnership at will or partnership with a fixed term no it is self explanatory um, you just have to refer to the articles of partnership to determine if the partnership has a fixed term or period, or if there is none, then the partnership is presumed to be existing at will. When you say at will, then at any time, a partnership can withdraw or terminate or dissolve the partnership. That is why it is called partnership at will. As to legality of existence, just like in the concept of a corporation, you have here the jure partnership and de facto partnership. As to represent, representation to others, ordinary or real partnership, ostensible partnership, or partnership by estopel. Okay. As to publicity, open and secret partnership, as to purpose, it can be commercial or trading partnership, no? The basic purpose of which is to derive profits. And the second one as to purpose is professional or non-trading partnership. Let us go in the first uh, classification of partnership, universal partnership of all present property. Now, in this type of partnership, now, all of the partners, partners will have common property not with respect to the property which belong to each of them at the time of the constitution of the partnership. And also in this type of partnership, 
no, the profits that may have been acquired from such contribution pertaining to all present property will also form part of the assets of the partnership. Now again, in a universal partnership of all present property, the assets of the partnership will have to include all properties of a particular partner at the time that he joined or at the time of the constitution or the formation of the partnership and all the fruits or profits that they may have acquired from such contribution. Now, there are different kinds of partners also under the civil code. You have the capitalist partner. No, uh, again, I have discussed this during the first lecture. When you say capitalist partner, your contribution consists of money or property. Industrial partner is the one who um, contribute his labor or service. Now you have general partner, limited special partner, managing general or real partner, and the liquidating partner. You also have partner by estopel, partner by implication, nominal partner, quasi partner. Continuing partner, surviving partner, or sub-partner. Class, I just want you to take note of the concept of partner by estopel. Actually, class, a partnership by estopel or a partner by estopel is not by law a partnership. Don't be confused. No, actually, partnership by estopel is a misnomer. There is no such thing as a partner or partnership by estopel. There is no such thing as partnership by estopel. The law only creates a partnership you know, because there was a misrepresentation on the part of the partners. You now, with respect to a, to a person who is not actually a partner of a partnership or it is just a rule of equity. Ibig sabihin, class, no, minsan kasi um, uh, a certain group of persons may represent no, or misrepresent that uh, they are engaged or registered as a partnership. Now, um, because of this misrepresentation to the general public as to the existence of a partnership, the law creates them or treats them those who misrepresented themselves as partners to be actually partners, but that treatment of the law is only for the purpose of the imposition of penalty. Tanda anyan class, only for the imposition of the penalty among the supposed or alleged partner. Pero, pero class, wala talagang partnership na tinatawag, no? There is no such thing as partner by estopel. No, the law only treats him as a partner only for the purpose of the imposition of penalty. But in truth and in fact, there is no partnership created by Estopel. Okay. You have other classifications when you say ostensible partner. It is an active or known partner. You have their secret partner, silent partner, etc., etc., now, a dormant or sleeping partner is a partner who is not active in the administration of the business of the partnership. No, kaya, siya, kaya siya tinawag na dormant or sleeping partner. He is not active in the administration of the partnership. He is not known to be a partner. No? Original partner, incoming partner, retiring, withdrawing partner. Now, class... All partners in any of these classes are subject to liability for partnership obligations. So class, depending on the kinds of partnership or the kinds of partner, no, the, the law will fix the obligation of each partner in accordance with the kind of partner that they are. Now, we said that as an uh, ostensible partner, no, is the active partner. Now, if an ostensible partner or an active partner turns out to be not actually a partner in a partnership, 
No, he is liable as a partner in accordance with the liability no, or the doctrine of estopel. Ito yung binabanggit ko sa inyo kanina, class. Partnership by estopel. Ibig sabihin, minisrepresent niya yung sarili niya as a partner, no, but it turns out that he is not actually a partner. So he is not created or he is not being made as an actual partner, but he is being made as a partner by estopel only for the purpose of the imposition of liability that he created. In other words, class, no, a, a partner whom a person who misrepresented himself to be a partner, no, cannot be heard later on as claiming na eh, hindi naman ako partner talaga eh, no? Therefore, hindi ako li liable sa partnership liability. Well, again, the law will just treat that person as partnership by estopel. When you say estopel, he is now estope, no? From the word estope. He is barred, he is prohibited from claiming that he is not a part a partner as a defense. Hindi niya pwedeng gamitin defense na actually hindi ako member ng partnership. You can go over the articles of partnership. My not my name is not written there. No, so in other words, the law will bar him, will prohibit him or will stop him from denying his misrepresentation that he is a partner. So that is the concept of partnership by estopel. Now, a silent partner need not be a secret partner. No? If he withdraws, he must give notice to persons who do business with the firm to escape liability in the future. No? And a dormant partner may retire without giving notice and cannot be held liable for the obligations of the firm subsequently. Okay, universal partnership of profits. This is the second type of universal partnership. Now, in a universal partnership of profits class, now the partners will retain ownership over their present and future property. Now, unlike in a universal partnership of all present property, in universal partnership of profits, now the present and future property of the partner no will remain to be owned by such by such partner no again the rule is all present and future property of the partner will remain to be owned by the contributing partner no and what is contributed to the partnership is what the profits or the fruits what pass to the partnership are the profits and usufruct of the property. So class, you have to remember these two concepts. No, yung fruits, madali na yan eh. Natural, industrial, or civil fruits, madali na yan. Now, yung usufruct class, anong ibig sabihin ng usufruct? A usufruct or usufructuary means that uh, the present and future property of a partner no, will be used by the partnership. So, ipapagamit lang ng mga partners yung property nila instead of contributing it or transferring ownership to the partnership. So, in a universal partnership of profits, again, no, the partners retain their ownership over the present and future property and what passed to the partnership are the profits and the use of fruct or use of the property no because the the, uh, the the partners in a universal partnership of profits no will retain ownership over the property that is being used by the partnership upon dissolution such property is returned to the partners who own it in other words class in a universal partnership of all present property, the ownership of the contribution is being transferred from the partners to the partnership. However, in universal partnership of profits, there is no transmission of ownership 
from the partner to the partnership, but the partner the partnership only enjoys the profits and the use of the property which is owned by the partners. So, okay, you have to take note of the difference between the two. Now, third, profit profits acquired by the partners through chance like lottery or by lucrative titles such as uh, donation, no, without the employment of any physical or intellectual efforts are not included. So, for example, class, A is a member of a partnership during the term of the partnership, no, nanalo sa loto si A, or may nag-donate kay A. No? Ang tanong, kasama ba ito? No? Kasama ba ito? Yung, kasama ba yung property that was donated or that he won in the lottery in the uh, universal partnership of profits? The answer is no. No class. Basta any profits no, acquired by the partners through chance, such as lottery or by lucrative title, just like a donation, no, which does not include any physical or intellectual efforts, are not included in the universal partnership of profits. Okay. So in other words, class, lahat lang ng profits ng property mo na merong physical or intellectual exertion ang magiging part ng universal partnership of profits. Okay. Fruits of property subsequently acquired by the partners do not belong to the partnership unless by express stipulation. So class, those fruits of property subsequently acquired no, after the constitution of the partnership do not belong to the partnership unless there is a contrary stipulation. Okay. So in other words, class, only the fruits of the property which is owned by the partner will form part of the universal partnership of profits. Those properties that will be subsequently acquired, the fruits thereof will not belong no, or will not accrue to the partnership unless, of course, there is a contrary stipulation. Okay. Now, profits acquired by the use of industry or work and use of frac belong to the partnership as a matter of right unless contrary stipulation exists. Okay. Now, class, for example, there is an articles of partnership and that uh, the articles of partnership mention that it is a universal partnership. Now, the Articles of Partnership failed to specify the specific classification of the partnership. No, nalagay doon, universal partnership lang siya. But then again, the Articles failed to specify if it is a universal partnership of all present property or a universal partnership of profits. Now, in case that the articles is silent, no, the law presumes that the partners intended what? Universal partnership of all present property or universal partnership of profits? The answer is the latter. No, there is a presumption in favor of universal partnership of profits. But take note, class, that the presumption will apply only if the articles of, in, of partnership will specify for a universal partnership. Okay. Now, what is the reason, class, why the law presumes universal partnership of profits? The reason is that there is less burden on the partners. Kasi class, pag universal partnership of profits, no, ang contribute lang again is the use of the property or the profits of the properties. No? So magiging less yung transmission 
ng rights over the property. Kasi class, if there is no express intention on the part of the partners, then ang sasabihin ng batas, hindi niya naman sinabi na ibibigay niya na lahat ng properties niya. No, there is no such intent. So the law will presume that what has been agreed upon is a universal partnership of profits and not the more burdensome universal uh, partnership of all present property. Okay. Now, class, what are the limitations on the right to form a universal partnership? Okay. Class, may mga tao na hindi pwedeng magbigay ng donation sa bawat isa. No? So, persons, those persons who are prohibited by law to give donations cannot enter into a universal partnership. No? For the reason that each partner virtually makes a donation. No? Partnership formed in violation of this article is null and void, and there is no personality acquired. Class, sino sino kaya itong mga taong ito na hindi pwedeng ma, uh, mag-donate? No? Persons who are prohibited by law to give donations. They are also prohibited to enter into a universal partnership. Class, tandaan nyo to, ah. Kasi class, in case of violation of this rule, the partnership no, as a contract will become void. This is the second instance class where the contract of partnership is void. Ano yung una in the first video, if you remember? Diba? The first instance where the partnership will, be, um, will become void no, is if in case a real right or real property is donated or contributed to the partnership and there is non-compliance with the formal requirements that it must be made in a public instrument, there must be an inventory signed by the parties and that it must be registered in the registry of property or the registry of deeds. Now, this is the second instance where in partnership becomes void. No? When the persons who are joining the partnership no, is prohibited by law to give donation. This rule will apply only to universal partnership. Okay. The pertinent legal provision class is the, uh, the provision on the family code. No? Family code. Now, class, Ang isang, ang isang taong may asawa, no? a husband or a wife, no? is prohibited from making what? No? Every donation, grant, or gra grant of gratuitous advantage, direct or indirect between spouses during marriage shall be void except moderate gifts for family rejoicing. So class, a husband and wife cannot join a universal partnership. Kasi bakit kaya class? Ano ang rationale ng batas? Kasi pag universal partnership class, no, technically lahat ng property mo mapupunta doon sa assets ng partnership. Now, if a husband or a wife, no, will join a universal partnership, then yung conjugal property nila or yung absolute community of property nila as the case may be, will be transmitted to the partnership. So, magkakaroon ng confusion of ownership of properties between the conjugal partnership of gains or absolute community of property, as the case may be, and the assets of the corporation. So, in order to avoid this confusion of ownership, the law prohibits a person who are disqualified or prohibited by law to give donations, just like husband and wife, to enter into a contract of universal partnership. Now, ano pa yung mga void donation? Okay, donation made between persons guilty of adultery or concubinage at the time of donation. Class, for example, 
no um the crime of adultery no or concubinage actually sa revised penal code no adultery is committed by the husband or the wife the wife no pagka nagkaroon ng for example um extramarital affairs yung wife no that crime is called as adultery you have to take note that under our criminal law our penal system adultery is only committed by the wife on the other hand no concubinage is committed by the husband no in other words if there is an extramarital affair no yung mga may may meron pa sila mga tinatawag natin na mga kerida no may mga ganon so for example niregaluhan nila no because you cannot donate um any property no to kasi nga sabi nga ng batas bawal ka mag-donate ng ano nga eh sa asawa mo eh no hindi ka pwedeng mag-donate tapos sa kerida pa kaya so the law prohibits donation to yung mga ganun no sa to yung mga extramarital affairs kasi kung hindi allow ng batas sa mag-asawa bakit bakit iya allow sa extramarital affairs which is why pag nag-donate si husband in case of concubinage or si wife in case of adultery doon sa kanyang paramour no that donation is what void no it is without legal effect no so since uh, um persons guilty of adultery or concubinage at the time of donation no is also prohibited by law to make donation they cannot form a universal partnership no the the querida the paramour and the husband or wife as the case may be may not enter into a universal partnership now may uh, okay donation made between persons found guilty of same criminal offense and then a donation made to a public officer is also a void donation for example no merong isang public officer that you need some uh, advantage no you are asking for a favor binigyan mo siya ng regalo no so that is a void donation you cannot also make donation to his wife or his husband no as the case may be to his descendants ascendants by reason of his office okay now class every partner is a debtor of the partnership so for example class um yung contribution mo is house and lot no hindi pa naman ikaw required na i-transfer agad yung title or ownership over the house and lot now in case that you have promised to contribute a property you are essentially becoming a debtor of the partnership with respect to what you have promised to contribute now you are also liable to pay for the fruits from the time that the fruits should have been delivered without the need of demand no naaalala niyo class sa law on obligation and contracts di ba liable ka lang sa payment ng fruits natural industrial or civil from the time that there has been what a demand judicial or extrajudicial in case of a partnership class hindi kailangan ng demand ibig sabihin from the time that you have promised the contribution of a particular property you are already liable to pay the fruits therefrom without need of a demand now class since a every partner is a debtor of the partnership no as a general rule class under the law on obligation and contracts no in obligations consisting of payment of sum of money indemnity or payment for damages shall only be paid upon demand naalala niyo class under article 1169 of the civil code di ba anong sabi natin diyan no demand no delay No, ibig sabihin if you did not make a demand judicially or extrajudicially, wala pang delay. Kung walang delay, hindi pa siya liable to pay interest. Yan, that is the general 
rule. Now, we will relate this concept under the law on obligations and contract to the law on partnership. Class, one exception is a partnership. No? In a partnership, the partner's obligation to contribute property becomes due and demandable even in the absence of any demand. So, in the, the law on partnership actually class is an exception to the rule of no demand, no delay under Article 1169. No, in other words, kahit uh, wala pang demand na, na uh, ginagawa yung partnership, for example, ibigay mo na yung, yung, yung promise mo to give the house and lot as your contribution. No, ang defense ni partner is that, well, I am not yet liable for the payment of the fruits because I have not been placed in legal delay. No? Well, actually, class, by express provision of the law, there is no need for demand before the partner can be placed in delay. Kasi nga, express provision of the law. Naalala nyo, class 1169, no demand, no delay. One of the exceptions is when the law expressly provides. This is one instance where the law expressly um, provide that demand is no longer necessary in order to put the partner in delay. Okay. Now, the guilty partner is liable for both interest and damages, not from the time of demand, but from the time that the uh, contribution to make property becomes due and demandable. Okay, class. For example, hindi talaga um, ibinigay yung property, no? Kasi ang, ang lahat ng partner meron siyang obligation with respect to the contribution of property. Now, what is the remedy of the partnership? No, in case that the partner will refuse to make contribution or to make good of his promise to make contribution. Now, the remedy of the partnership in in eviction delay or retention of contribution excuse me is not rescission or cancellation of contract di ba na alala nyo class sa law on obligation and contracts if the debtor or obligor fails to make good of his promise no uh, if the debtor or obligor fails to perform his part of the obligation what are the remedies of the obligee or creditor? He can cancel the obligation or he can cancel the contract. No? In a contract of partnership, rescission or cancellation of the contract of partnership is not a remedy. Is not a remedy. Tandaan nyo yan. Walang remedy of cancellation or rescission in case of a partnership. What do we mean by this? In case that the partner will refuse to make contribution or in case that the partner has incurred delay in his contribution or in case that uh, the partnership was evicted no, from the premises of the property contributed by the partner, there are only two remedies left to a partnership. What are those? Number one is action for specific performance. When you say action for specific performance, the partnership can go to court and compel the partner, the guilty partner, to contribute or to transfer ownership no, of the property to the partnership. Okay, that is what you mean by action for specific performance. That is a legal way of compelling the partner to make contribution through a court order. Now, the partnership can also ask for damages and interest from the time that he should have complied. But again, class, I will have to emphasize the remedy of rescission or cancellation is not available in case the partner will have to incur delay in the contribution of his property. Okay. 
Now, class, there are some, there are certain prohibitions, no? In an industrial partner and a capitalist partner. Class, actually, pag industrial partner ka, ano sabi natin kanina? What you are contributing is your services or labor. Now, class, if you are an industrial partner, you cannot engage in business for yourself. Hindi mo pwedeng kompetensyahin yung partnership. No? Unless the, the industrial partner is expressly permitted to do so. No? You cannot engage in business for yourself. Now, if an industrial partner will engage in a certain business for himself, then the partnership can exclude him from the firm or the partnership. No? Or the partnership can avail of the benefits which he may have obtained pursuant to such business plus damages for either one. Now, class, I want you to remember the distinction between the prohibition to an industrial partner and a capitalist partner. Tandaan nyo yan, class. If you are an industrial partner, you cannot engage in any kind of business. Again, if you are an industrial partner, you cannot engage in any kind of business. On the other hand, if you are a capitalist partner, no, you cannot engage in the same kind of business of the partnership. So yun ang difference nila. If you are a limited partner, you cannot engage in any kind of business. But if you are a capitalist partner, you can engage in any other business as long as the business is not in direct competition with the partnership. Kasi class, isipin ninyo, kung limited partner, kung industrial partner ka rather, no, ang kinocontribute mo is your service or labor. Now, kung ang kinocontribute mo sa partnership is a service or labor, no, hindi ka pwedeng mag-engage into another kind of business or any other kind of business, no, whether or not it is in direct competition with the partnership because it is your time, it is your service, no, which is being contributed to the partnership. In case an industrial partner will embark into any kind of business, then his attention, time, and resources will be divided into half. No, ma, ma, yung attention niya, yung oras niya, hindi niya na makayang tutukan yung, part, yung business ng partnership. Which is why, in a limited partner class, or sorry, in an industrial partner rather, no, there is an absolute prohibition. When you say absolute prohibition, regardless of the kind of business, no, an industrial partner is prohibited from doing so. The exception is unless no, he is expressly permitted by the partnership. On the other hand, class, kapag capitalist partner ka, no, he, pwede kang mag-engage or mag-invest um, no, into um, a business as long as that business is not in direct competition with the partnership. Kasi class, kung isipin mo, kung capitalist partner ka, you are merely, what? Investing your money. Parang hindi ikaw yung nagmamanage nung partnership. Unlike that of an industrial partner. Kasi pag industrial partner ka, ikaw yung nagmamanage nung, nung affairs nung partnership. ba? Yung service mo yung kinocontribute mo. Unlike pag capitalist ka lang, nagbigay ka lang ng money. Or nagbigay ka lang ng property. No? So pwede ka ulit mag-invest sa iba. Kasi hindi hindi maapektuhan yung partnership, yung management ng partnership. Okay. Imminent loss of the business. O so class minsan no ang partnership pag nagkaroon ng imminent loss, ibig sabihin parang is, iniisip nila malulugi na sila. No, ano ang remedy ng partnership? Number one, no, sasabi mo doon sa mga partners, you have to make additional contribution. 
no? except an industrial partner. So lahat ng capitalist partner magbibigay ng additional contribution kasi malulugi yung partnership. Okay. Now, what is the remedy of the partnership in case that the capital partner or capitalist partner no, will refuse to make additional contributions? No, the remedy is that he shall be obliged to sell his interest in other partners. Okay, just take note of that. Okay, let us now go to the rule on application of payments. Kasi klase nangyayari yan kung ikaw ang managing partner. Minsan, no, yung, yung debtor mo, debtor din ng partnership. Di ba? May utang sa'yo yung isang tao, tapos dahil kilala ka niya as the managing partner, no, umutang na rin siya sa partnership kasi ikaw naman yung managing partner. Now, minsan, pag nagbayad yung debtor, no, hindi niya sinasabi kung ang binabayaran niya ba ay yung partnership or ang binabayaran niya yung managing partner. That is why meron tayong rule on application of payments. Class, the rule on application of payments no, is not new to you. Narinig nyo na yan sa Law on Obligation and Contracts. Di ba? Application of payment by the debtor. Di ba sino ang merong right to make application of payment? As a general rule, it is the debtor. Unless the debtor fails to make or to apply such payment, then it is the creditor which has the right to make application for payment. Now, Kapag nagbayad si debtor kay managing partner, no, tapos yung resibo ni managing partner inilagay niya, itong bayad na ito ay para lang sa akin personally and not to the partnership. Now, ang sabi ng batas, if the managing partner collects a demandable sum which is owed to him from a person who also owed the partnership another sum also demandable, the collected amount shall be applied to two credits in proportion to their amounts even though he may have given a receipt for his own credit only. So class, halimbawa, ako yung managing partner, nilagay ko sa resibo, receive from blank, and then I sign it. No? Ibig sabihin, since the debtor failed to make application of payment, no? I exercise the right to apply the payment in my favor as the creditor. Now, the law will treat that as what? Payment also for the partnership. Kaya sabi ng batas class, the collected amount shall be applied to two credits referring to the credit of the managing partner and the credit of the partnership in proportion to their amount. Okay. Now, class, you have. I want you to remember, and I want you to take note that, no, in order for this rule to apply, kailangan both of these debts are due and demandable. Bakamamaya, class, isagot nyo sa exam, no, it must be applied to two credits in proportion to their amounts. Yun pala, yung utang sa partnership hindi pa siya due and demandable. Excuse me. Okay. So you have to remember that this rule will apply only if both credits are due and demandable. Pag ang isa doon, class, hindi pa due and demandable, no, you do not apply the rule. Now, pag ang nilagay naman ni managing partner, if the, um, sa resibo, etong bayad ni debtor is only for the account of the partnership, then the whole amount is fully applied to the partnership debt or credit. Okay. So again, what are the requisites for the application of sum of money? No, number one, dapat merong two debts. One for the collecting partner and the other one is for the partnership and that both debts are demandable and that the partner who collects is authorized to manage and actually managing the partnership. Now, kung walang 
Sabi doon, pagka sa resibo nilagay is for the account of the partnership, the entire amount is for the partnership. On the other hand, pag walang resibo, tinanggap niya lang yung cash and later on, the payment was discovered, ano ang sabi ng batas? It will be applied to the partnership. No, the entire amount will be applied to the partnership. So, pag ang resibo nilagay partnership, no, it is for the account of the partnership. Pag walang resibo, it will be applied to the partnership. Why, class? Why? Kasi pinaprotektahan ng batas ang partnership no? from certain abuse by the managing partner. Okay. Now, this provision does not apply if the collecting partner is not the managing partner. Baka mamaya, class, nakita nyo lang may ganyang situation. Nagbayad sa partner. Both debts are due and demandable. No? Tapos, ang isasagot ninyo, uh, dahil inilagay doon sa resibo is for the account of the partner, hati na sila ng partnership. Class, do not apply the rule if the person collecting is not the managing partner. No, the rule will apply only if the collecting partner is the managing partner. Now, where the manner of management has not been has not been agreed upon, all the partners will participate in the management of partnership. Then every partner shall be considered a managing partner. Class, pag walang agreement kung sino a managing partner, lahat ng partner is considered as the managing partner. Okay. But there is an exception here, class. If the personal credit of the partner is more onerous, in which case it has, for example, a higher interest no, with more burden, then the debtor can prefer the payment to him. Kasi class, in this case, in exercise na ni debtor yung kanyang right to make application. So in other words, if the debtor will exercise his right to make application of payments, then do not apply the rule also. Okay. In case class nagbayad na, no, the partnership who has received in whole or in part his share of the partnership credit, for example, class, may nagbayad ng partnership credit, tapos may isang partner na na-receive niya na, yung iba hindi pa, and it turned out that uh, the, the debtor um, should have become insolvent after the payment, no? The partnership has the remedy to bring the payment to the partnership capital, no, even though he may have given receipt for his share only. This is based on the community of interest among the partners. Okay. Okay, class. With respect to damages suffered by the partnership class. Minsan, no? Through the fault of a partner, nag-i-incur ng penalty ang partnership. So, ang sabi dito, every partner is responsible to the partnership for damages suffered by it through his fault. And he cannot compensate them with the profits and benefits which he may have earned from the partnership by his industry. So in case class, nagkaroon ng damages suffered by the partnership. Okay? Tapos, the partnership was uh, incurred, I'm sorry, the damages was incurred by the partnership through the fault of a certain partner. So class, hindi pwedeng magkaroon ng compensation. No? Doon sa profit niya at doon sa payment or liability for damages. No, arising from the uh, fault of a partner. Okay. So class, di ba naalala nyo sa law on obligation and contracts? No? Yung compensation, legal compensation or set off. No, you remember that one? If both debts are demandable, for example, no, and uh, both parties are creditor or debtor of each other, etc., etc., nakakaroon ng legal compensation na extinguish yung obligation by operation of law. No, hindi mo na kailangan sabihin sa kanya, o oh, may utang ka sa akin, may utang ako sa'yo, extinguish na yung utang natin. Kasi parang quits na, di ba? Now class, 
there is no compensation or offsetting in case of a partnership. Halimbawa, the partnership suffered from, from damages through the fault of a partner, hindi pwedeng i-offset class ng isang partner yung profit niya at yung liability niya to pay the damages incurred through his fault. So, class by express provision of law, there can be no compens legal compensation or offsetting. Okay. Okay, class. Sometimes, no, the, the risk of loss of specific and determinate things which are not fungible now contributed so that the only use and fruits may be for the common benefit shall be borne by the partner who owns them. Now, class, for example, in case of universal uh, partnership of profits, wherein what has been contributed is the use or the profit or the income of the property, no? If that contribution or if that property is lost, no, and that uh, the property is specific or determinate, which are not fungible or consumable, no, then the loss is borne by the partner because, again, that property is owned by him. Okay, on the other hand, if the thing contributed is fungible or cannot be kept without deteriorating, or if contributed, if contributed to be sold, the risk shall be borne by the partnership. So class, yung rule na yan, tandaan nyo lang para mas madaling maintindihan, just determine who owns the property. Now, if the property is owned by the partner, then he borne the risk. Otherwise, the partnership will borne the risk. Okay. Okay, so just go over these five cases wherein the partnership will borne the risk or will bear the risk, no? Specific and determinate things. The ownership is transferred to the partnership. Fungible things, etc., etc. Okay. Okay. Now, class, let us go to the agreement of the sharing in the profits and losses. Okay. So, as a rule, the profits and losses shall be distributed in conformity with the agreement of the parties. Now, if only the share of profit is agreed upon, the share in the loss shall be the same proportion. In the absence of stipulation, share in the profit or loss is in proportion to the contribution. So, number one is agreement of the partners. And if there is no such agreement, the, the sharing in the profit of losses is in proportion to the contribution. Take note, class, that an industrial partner or that who contributes service no? or losses is not liable for losses. Ang liable lang for losses is what? A capital partner, but not an industrial partner. Okay. Okay, so this is just the basic uh, concepts of an industrial partner. Okay, class. Now, if the partners have agreed to trust to, or to entrust to a third person the designation of the share no, in the profit or losses, kasi minsan, class, no, so na, the, the partnership has, for example, earned a lot of profits. No? The partnership can designate a third person to determine the sharing in the profit. No? If it, or if it's a loss, then the partnership will have to designate another person or a third person to determine the sharing in the losses. Now, when the third person des um, determines or designates the sharing in the profits of losses, such designation cannot be impugned except when it is manifestly inequitable. So you have to show that it is, um, for example, uh, manifestly inequitable or when you say manifestly inequitable it is contrary to the basic sense of fairness and justice so pagka yung yung if the sharing is uh, will run afoul the basic uh, 
sense of fairness or justice, then you can impugn the determination of a third person. Okay. Now, class, the designation of the profits or the sharing in the profits or losses cannot be entrusted to one of the partners. Why, class? Hindi pwedeng partner ang magdetermine ng sharing sa, sa profits and losses because the article follows the general rule in contracts that the fulfillment of a contract cannot be left to the will of one of the contracting parties alone. Kasi class, if a partner will determine the sharing sa profits or sa losses, then in essence, no, you are allowing no, a party to a contract to determine fulfillment or non-fulfillment. Di ba sinabi natin yan sa, sa law on obligation and contracts? No, if the debtor can determine or can, can decide for himself the fulfillment or non-fulfillment of a uh, suspensive condition, which is in this example, the, the uh, sharing in the profits of losses, then the entire obligation becomes void. Because what? Why? Because if the debtor will determine the fulfillment of a, or a suspensive condition, then nawawala yung obligatory force ng isang obligation. Now, the same principle applies in the determination of the sharing in the profits or losses in a partnership. Hindi pwedeng partner ang magdetermine ng sharing. Why? Because it will violate the principle that a party to a contract cannot determine for himself the fulfillment of his obligation. Okay. The partner in the first paragraph is guilty of estoppel or to have give his consent to the ratification of designation. The reason for the short period of etc. etc. Okay. Just go over the same. Okay, class. Any stipulation or agreement exempting a particular partner from profit or losses is void. Void yan, class. No, but the partnership will remain unaffected. In other words, class, even if there is a stipulation that a particular partner will be exempted from partnership or losses, no, will not make the partnership void but will only make such stipulation in the Articles of Partnership void. Okay. But tandaan nyo, class, if the partner excluded from loss is an industrial partner, valid pa din yun. Kasi again, an industrial partner is naturally excluded or not liable for losses. Now, I think this is our last uh, topic, no? And uh, this will end our discussion for the, for the law on partnership class. Okay, this is the thing. I cannot discuss to you all of the provisions, no, on the law on partnership. My presentation will only dwell on the areas or where I feel that you need to be given discussion on or you need further explanation on. No, I cannot discuss to you any, or I cannot discuss to you the entire provisions on the law on partnership. So I just trim down the topic and focus on the more important ones. But it doesn't mean that you will not read other provisions on the law on partnership. You have to read them. It is just that I did not include them in my presentation because I feel that they are self-explanatory or you can understand them by mere reading of your references. Now, the last point that I want to emphasize to you, class, is how to terminate the managing partner. Class, tandaan nyo, tandaan nyo yan. Importante yan. No? So, tandaan nyo, class, you, the mode of termination of the managing partner dip depends no depends on the manner by which the managing partner is appointed class if the managing partner 
is appointed in the Articles of Partnership, then his power may not be revoked without just or lawful cause. Tandaan nyo yan. If the managing partner again no, is appointed in the Articles of Partnership, he can only be removed no, with just or lawful cause. Kailangan merong dahilan or merong um, valid reason. No? And that secondly, the vote of the partners representing the controlling interest shall be necessary for the revocation of the power. Now, class, on the other hand, if the managing partner was appointed, excuse me, after constitution of the partnership, then he may, his power may be revoked at any time or for any cause. Huh? His power may be revoked at any time and for any cause. Kahit wala siyang ginawang, for example, offense to the partnership, no? even there is no legal cause, there is no valid cause for removal, there is no just cause or lawful cause, pwede pa rin siyang alisin. That is the difference between the two. No? Take note that this provision will apply only to a partner and not to a stranger. Okay? And that a partner is not entitled to compensation for its services other than his share of the profits. Now, as a summary, the powers of the managing partner appointed in the Articles of Partnership can be revoked only no, by the concurrence of these two. Kailangan, class, pareho sila. No? Pareho silang nag -e exist Number one, there must be a just and lawful cause. No, ibig sabihin, hindi siya pwedeng alisin no, for any reason. And that number two, there must be vote of, vote of the partner with controlling interest. Okay, with that, I end my presentation. I hope you learn um, something about the law and partnership. No? I will see you again for the next video. Okay, bye.